welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. It is a great day here at Bible Tract Echoes. I hope you're having a great day in the Lord. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, we come to one verse that has a well-known title to it, at least well-known for those who have been around Bible-preaching churches for very long. That title is The Great Commission. The Great Commission. You get your Bible open to Mark 16, and you join me there. You may want to get something to write with as well. Well, I hope that your church has an annual missions conference. And on top of that, I hope that your local church has real live missionaries that that come to your church on a somewhat of a regular basis and share the burden that God has put on their heart for their part of the world. A healthy church will have a vibrant missions emphasis in it. Now, some churches, they belong to organizations uh, and they, where local churches go together and it becomes the, well, the, the job of the bigger organization to do the major missionary work. I really don't think that's the wise way to do it. I don't think it's the expedient way, and I don't think it really lines up with the example of missions in the Word of God. There are some confusions in these days as to, well, what constitutes missions anyway. May I be allowed to kind of step my foot into that discussion today here on this broadcast? Today, we're going to revisit the last command that Christ gave to his disciples before he ascended back to heaven. And again, we call this command the Great Commission. You get your Bible. Join me, please. Mark and chapter 16. Now, whether you are very familiar with the Great Commission or it's a rather new term to you, I would really like for you to give me feedback on today's broadcast. And to enable you to do that, we have developed this uh, this text messaging system. I'm going to give you a phone number here in just a moment, and I'm going to repeat the phone number again near the end of the broadcast, but it's a text messaging number. It's just for that. If you'll text to me the word gospel, that's G-O-S-P-E-L, text the word gospel to me to this number. Are you ready? The number is area code 708-515-4086. Again, that's area code 708-515-4086. Text me the word gospel. And when you do that, I'll begin to ask you four or five questions. You can rate the broadcast and so on. And if you'd like, you can even ask a Bible question. I say that because next week we're going to finish up our study here in the Gospel of Mark chapter 16, and we'll have completed all the way through Mark's Gospel, and we're going to begin to answer some of the questions that folk have asked us through the text messaging system. Now, if you're not a text messaging kind of a person and you would like to have a question dealt with on the broadcast, please, by all means, you can email that to us. You can write us that. You can phone it in, whatever. My announcer will give you those things here in a moment. In my hand is one of the great children's tracks that we use. Many churches are having vacation Bible schools this summer, and many churches use this track to help lead kids to Christ. The track is called Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. It was designed to be very simple, very uh, very simple in its wording, very simple uh, in its presentation of the gospel and answering some critical questions that children have the right to know the answers to from the Word of God. If you deal with children, if you have children, you have grandchildren, here's a track for you. Seven questions boys and girls ask. And again, at the end of the broadcast, when my announcer comes on and gives you the mailing address and the phone number and all that kind of stuff, you can ask for a sample pack out of all of our English gospel tracks. And this one, seven questions boys and girls ask, will be part of that sample packet. 
And again, that's absolutely free of charge. All right. Well, let me read one verse today. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 says this, and he, that's Christ, said unto them, the disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Great Commission is a term many believers have heard, and more often than not, we turn to Matthew 28, 19, and 20 when we talk about the Great Commission. But today, we see the Great Commission as it's stated here by the Spirit of God in, uh, in the last chapter of Mark's Gospel. If there is one, well, overarching or predominant emphasis that I see in Mark's Great Commission text, it is this. It's the scope or the extent of the Great Commission. Let me use three words, all that begin with the letter F today. The first one is the word function. Notice first, our function. Go ye, we're told in verse 15. Now, just as Mary, back in verses 9, 10, and 11, was given information that demanded a task, so the book of Mark is full of information about the Lord Jesus Christ, and it ends with a task. Literally stated here, the Greek words literally, when when translated as blunt literally, say this, being ones who are already gone being ones who are already gone. You see, the word go is not really a verb in the Greek. It's a participle. It's a noun with a verb punch to it. You and I are called going ones, or more bluntly, gone ones. You see, we are already in this world of ours. And by the time that Mark's penned, uh, Mark penned the, the gospel here, The believers had already been scattered throughout the the known Roman world. God God is still in the business, uh, my friend, of giving special ministry calls to certain believers to go far from their homes, far from their cultures for the cause of the gospel. They go places, but all of us are in this world. Now, we often know the text, we are in the world, but not of it, but we are sure in it. We've already gone. We are gone ones, but we're gone with a function. Secondly, my word that begins with the letter F is the fullness, our fullness. We are to go into all the world. And later on, we're told these words, every creature in our text. Once again, let me repeat, uh, let me refer to the to the Greek language here. The word all is a very, very strong Greek word in its form. It means all as in all parts, every part of the world. And, and then Jesus, just to make sure we get this, adds another layer to this all. And he says, we are to give the gospel to every creature, to every single person. That means that you and I need to minister the gospel to every soul around us, and then we and I are to help get the gospel to all those souls that are not around us. You and I are responsible for the world's population. Now, I didn't give that to us. No church denomination gave that to us. That was given to us by the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You and I are responsible that the world gets the gospel in our generation. My third word that begins with the letter F, so far I've had our function to go ye, our fullness into all the world and to every creature, and now our focus. Our focus here is this, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Here is a simple, simple truth that is frankly believe it or not, being hotly debated. The emphasis in missions is the declaration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, all in accordance with the word of God. That is the the nutshell of the gospel. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You and I are due declare the gospel. The missions is not social reform. Missions is not building hospitals. Missions is not digging wells. It's not starting schools. Now, listen to me. Those things that I just stated 
all can be used as a means to open the door to share the gospel, but they are not missions. Now listen, there are all kinds of social endeavors that are done today, that are used. I can take you to places where they have hospitals, they they minister to the physical needs of people, but while the needs are being met, they're giving people the gospel. Often those social endeavors end up just simply being done as a means and an end in themselves, and no gospel is told. That is not obeying the Great Commission. If I were to have a missionary come to me and say, would you help support me to go to the mission field? And they're not planning to share the gospel as the focal point, the the priority of their life. I would say, no, I'm not going to give you any of my money, or I would not encourage our church to give them any money. Well, tell me, believer friend, what do you do for your church? Do you mow the lawn? Great. You work in the nursery? Wonderful. Do you serve as a deacon, a Sunday school teacher? Great. I rejoice in that. What do you do for your church? Now, all that is good. But now I ask a different question. What are you doing for the gospel and lost people? Are you, am I, obeying the Great Commission? Well, it's time for you to respond to the broadcast. It's time for you to think and say, what does God want me to do with what I've heard today on the broadcast of Bible Track Echoes? Now, I would very much like you to respond to me and text me the word gospel to the number. Remember, I gave it before. I'm going to give it to you again right now. If you're driving, get off the road. Don't text while you drive. Get off. But I really do want you to text me. Here's the number. Text me the word gospel to area code 708-515-4086. Again, that number is 708-515-4086. It is amazing to me how many people, they want Jesus as the moral teacher, but they don't want Jesus who sends his followers out to a world to tell his gospel to a world. His gospel is an exclusive gospel. Jesus is the only way to have your sins forgiven. Jesus is the only way that can get a lost person who's piled sin upon their life by their own actions, forgiven of that sin, redeemed through the shed blood of Jesus, be declared fit to enter heaven. Your good works don't make you fit. My good works don't make me fit. My good works don't, not only do they not make me fit, they can't apply to my kids. My kids are sinners. They need a savior. I need a savior. I found a savior. I found one, and there is only one. God has said in the book of Isaiah, I alone am the savior. Oh, friend, have you received Jesus Christ as your savior Have you personally come to grips with your sinfulness? You have broken God's law. You've broken every single one of them. Your heart is deceitfully wicked, and you know your heart. I don't have to convince you that, but there's a cleansing for your heart and soul. It's the shed blood of Christ. He came out of love for you. He died on the cross for you. He shed his blood for you, and he says, for you I will give eternal life if you will repent of your sin and receive me. Have you done it? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.